1960s PX liquor store in St. Cloud um, had a company just simply make uh, another tribute whiskey called Minnesota 13 and, and you know there were no copyright laws or anything and so for about 20 years they sold us out of PX liquor so I've seen a few places that have it sitting on the shelf um, and I was able to buy a bottle of that uh, an empty bottle of it this is a picture of Anton's and their bar. Next time you eat inside, there is virtually unchanged. There are only two speakeasies that you can still go into um, that are in active business today, and that is um, Anton's, which was Bricky's Woodland Lodge. And then if you go to the little dent in the road north of Albany named St. Anthony, the Green Lantern that still has wedding dances was a, a huge dance hall speakeasy back then. But other than that, every hotel has all been ripped down. They're gone. So. Um, Certainly, Anton's has been added on to, but the bar area looks almost like it did in 1930. <clears throat> this was a cartoon in the St. Paul Pioneer Press in 1962, uh, an article that had been done. They called up the cartoonist to get permission to use it, and he didn't even have any memory of it. He says, make a copy and send it to me. <laughs> a couple of the characters I talked about earlier. The um, picture on my left of Dillinger is kind of an interesting one because this was sort of the beginning of his demise. He broke out of the jail. He had done a robbery. Um, they killed a police officer, and he was in jail in Crown Point, Indiana. And he whittled a gun out of a piece of washboard and painted it with black shoe polish. And he got out of jail locking up 32 people and drove away with the sheriff's car with a piece of wood. And then they don't even go after him. This is him at his dad's place a few miles away where he stayed another three days and we don't even come and raid him. And so there he is grinning with his tiny gun and his little piece of wood. And he went from Crown Point directly to St. Paul. And uh, there was a pretty exciting shootout on Lexington Avenue at the Lexington Avenue Apartments with Dillinger going out the back door with his girlfriend and um, them shooting through the front. <coughs> this is Chick's Chicken Camp. And that is Chick Molitor. This, um, the man who ran what is now Anton's, and again, I called it Bricky's Woodland Lodge. His name was Cy Brick. And I will let you put two and two together. His dad, Ed, was the chief of police in St. Cloud. And there's dad, 17 years. Um, Bricky's was never raided. And here we are at Assumption Home, and um, Jim drew this. <laughs> Picture because we had some of these old men kind of telling like, oh, how hard it was when they did this and that. Yeah, I, I, I interviewed an old fellow last week who's 89, and he was describing to me how, as a six-year-old, his job was to roll the 100-pound sacks of sugar as they came off the truck in the family's yard and roll them in the winter onto the sled, and then drag that sled out into the woods or get it onto the wagon. And you know, kids at age four, five, and six being put to work. And so he's got his war stories like that. This is Cybrick. Um, the man in the lower left was one of the kingpins in the county besides Chick Molitor, and his name was Val Herman from Hollingford. And a uh, big scandal during Prohibition because he was a county commissioner, and that's a picture of him with the other county commissioners. At one point, he had been um, a game warden in Hollingford, he had been the constable in Hollingford, he owned the power company there, he owned Herman and Hennett grocery store and he was um, one of the kingpins of the bootlegging in the county. And uh, the feds did a raid on the Pitzel Brewery in New Munich and arrested the father and son Pitzels and locked up all of the uh, inventory and all the beer and locked it up. And the next day someone calls from the factory and said, well, we're already missing some of the stuff you inventory. So that night three feds came out and they hid behind a building and waited for about five hours in a truck and um, a very new, uh, what was called touring car, Cadillac, came pulling by at 2 a.m. and starts unlocking stuff and loading up this leftover inventory. And so they're just watching and waiting to pounce on them, and the truck takes off. So two of the feds go after chasing this truck, and they end up on a 25-mile chase across the county. The other one stayed behind to start arresting the people that had been loading the truck. And um, we had almost a near murder happen because one of the feds, when they got side by side on that truck, eventually jumped on the running board to the truck and was hit over the head with a truck stake and left bleeding to death on the ground. And so the race stopped because the other fed had to go back and help his companion and take him into San Rafael's hospital in St. Cloud and he was comatose for days. So if he died, we would have had murder charges, but he did come too. But the man in the Cadillac was Bell Herman. 
and so it was him and his operations over there loading up um, during the night. And so this um, got quite a bit of national attention. This is the last large raid that happened in Stearns County. There have been some smaller, very quiet ones since. A few years ago, the St. Cloud Police dumped 300 gallons right in the city of St. Cloud and didn't arrest the man. It was a, a well-known employee out at the prison and they left him alone, but they did dump everything. But 300 gallons is a pretty sizable bunch of moon. Uh, this last big one then that got attention was in 1964, and this is north of Freeport, and Danny Finkin was producing into the 1980s. Um, everybody knew it. The feds knew it, and there are multiple different theories on this. One was that um, Agent Rhodes, who had been a fed for 37 years, was trying to do a publicity coup just prior to his retirement, retirement because they had the newspaper out there. It was all clearly staged. Um, another version of the story I was told was that Dan had shipped some of his hogs down to the stockyard, and they were acting very strange, and so the vet drew some blood, and it showed a high alcohol content in the blood. Um, Another version of it was that the feds finally raided him because uh, because he kept using milk and cream cans and you cannot leave alcohol in these more than about 48 hours and they will be leaching because the alcohol is corrosive. It's got to be in wood kegs or glass bottles. And so they raided him because they felt it was a safety issue. So I have no clue what's true. I'm told by several sources that it was a $10,000 fine and that his syndicate paid the fine in 1964. Um, this is the man that my uncles were producing for, and my uncle Gene from Albany, who was a trucker, was moving Dan Fink and Stills um, for another two years after this raid. So Uncle Gene moved his operations for the next 30 years after repeal. About every three weeks he would go get Danny's um, mashing bats and load up his truck, and he said he just headed cross country across the hay fields and the pod fields and cut fences and patched them behind him to stay off the roads, and um, I always had to keep moving the Fink and stuff every three weeks. So that was good on Uncle, Uncle Gene. <coughs> and my cousin that's my age remembers as a teenager delivering sugar, because Gene kept delivering sugar out there after he stopped moving things for him. He just said, you know, for $50, this isn't worth this risk anymore, but he could keep delivering sugar. So it's kind of funny to think that I've got uh, relatives my age who, as teenagers, were helping make the sugar deliveries. <coughs> Another joke. Uh, this is that raid, and um, Agent Rhodes. This is one of the shootouts that happened um, by Frigidaire. That's the Catholic churches. Let's see how many we have left on here. This was found in uh, Medicine Cabinet in Melrose. This is a Minneapolis photo, but I wanted you to see that clearly they're coming out of a factory that all exactly like. This was alcohol um, usage actually going up during the prohibition years, opposite of what the government intended. Uh, a postcard of Leavenworth. 